All right, folks, what's the crack? Welcome back to another episode of Meet the Members, where we have the chance to have quick little conversations with some of the incredible people who call Ormo Bass their business home. And I'm joined today by one of the OGs, <laughs> one of the original Eagles. <laughs> Does that mean I'm old? <laughs> no, it means that you're just like, you're like Mark Todd, like you're like one of the original bathers. Yeah, yeah. Lisa Bailey, Barclays. Hello. How are you? Lovely to see you. Thank you. We were just chatting before we hit record. We've actually known each other for a long time now. Five years. It's not scary. Yeah. Is it five years since you came to here? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I came here before we even opened. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Five Was years. Ormo Bass always an Eagle Lab to begin with, or how did that relationship happen? Actually, what is an Eagle Lab? Let's do that. So, Eagle Labs are part of Barclays Bank. Okay. Um, at the minute, we have over 30 across the UK, Isle of Man, Jersey, Guernsey. Um, and predominantly, we were set up to support startup startup companies. Um, when in Back in the early days, when they wanted, they talked about bringing Eagle Labs to Belfast, they thought, well, we Barclays have a very small market share in the market. And they thought, well, if we do this, we know we can't do it ourselves. So um, John Mathers, actually, from our corporate team, was in Catalyst. And he happened to bump into Mark Dowds and then they got talking and I think John was like, this is what we're wanting to do. And Mark's like, well, actually, this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> so it all really stemmed from there. And that's how Eagle Labs Belfast was born. So, yeah, we Incredible. were we were part of part of the, the contract and part of it all before even when you came in <clears throat> and the work was getting done. Cool. Yeah. OK, we're going to come back there. Let's go all the way back. Did your family own pubs or something growing up? Yeah, they did. So, um, yeah, how do you know that? I don't know. <laughs> Whenever the mic goes on, I just remember weird things about people how do genuinely. You know that? So, would you have grown up like this? Is kind of like a bit cliche, but like washing glasses and yeah. like working in the trade. Yeah, yeah. When would you start working? Oh, probably by eight or nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's Maybe amazing. even before. Do you think that that? Well, do you think that was good for you? Oh yeah, definitely. You enjoy. Um, it? Yeah, because you're always around people, and um, my my grand actually owned owned a bar for like 25 years, and then my mum and dad owned it, the same one for like 25 years after him. So oh, wow. yeah, always, and they haven't owned it now for almost 20 years. So, um, but yeah, my my young young days and sort certainly teenage teenage years was always there working and and um, yeah doing doing stuff behind the bar. And what? it's really strange because my mum has obviously she owned the bar for 25 years, but. Um, doesn't drink. She said it was enough to put her off her <laughs> life. <laughs> Tell us, like, I don't know, maddest story, thing that stands out to you, something you remember from your decade in hospitality. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> probably so many. Like, obviously, you're dealing with lots of drunk people. So, yeah, probably probably stories I couldn't even I'd have to kill you if I, have to, if I told you. Um, so, no, like, like literally, we, we kind of owned a, owned a bar and we... Well, seaside. Where village. was this? Where, where was it? It was down in Malile. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, and and in those days, lots of people from Belfast and rowdy um, cried, rowdy cried, de <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. a rowdy cried. Big caravan scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, love that. I remember. Um, yeah, so they used Who to. Who is that? To is that mainly Shankill or? That's yeah, it would be classically yeah. what it was. I think it? it's actually called Shankle by the Sea. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I uh, not that long ago there was a TV program made about. I think it might have been called Shankel by the Sea. I'm not really sure about Malayla and Nikita. You know, my daughter Nikita. She's like, I'm so embarrassed. People are going to think that's, you know. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so that that's what it's like. And it was really busy in those days. Um, yeah, really, really busy and, and lots of people around. Yeah. Well, I guess it makes sense. Like, you kind of wanted to get out of the city in those days, didn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So lots of people, like my granny and grand, moved down there to get out of the city, and then my mum and dad. And um, but it was funny because I, although I lived in Malai, I went to school in Belfast. So I remember going to school and people asking when I lived in Malai, they're like, "Oh, do you live in a caravan?" <laughs> <laughs> I like, no, I don't live in a caravan. What's yeah. that commute? Yeah, so I used to get the 10 past, I'll never forget it, winter mornings, well, 10 past seven bus to oh, school. Oh, pitch black. And then wasn't home till like half five, quarter to six at night. Also so, pitch black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so probably, to be fair, my school days was a longer day than my working day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So you obviously come from like quite a strong work ethic. Do you think you try to pass that on to your kids? Yeah. Because I know your wee lad's a hustler, like he's an entrepreneur through <laughs> oh, and through. He's, he's wild. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I always, growing up, I always had like 
even to this day, some people are like, Lisa, what does that even mean? But I still always remember, like, my mom's favourite quote to us was, if you don't work, your jaws don't work. You know, so you if you want to eat, you have to work. Oh, nice. You I know, didn't get that's, it. <laughs> if you don't work, your jaws don't work. And she always said that to us. Yeah. Um, and even days, like, I remember my, my brother, he, he's in the army, but I remember, you know, when he in his younger days when he didn't want to get up and go to work, or I was like, oh, I can't be bothered with this. And then it's just like, if you don't go to work, your jaws don't work. Get out and go to work. Class. So, yeah, so, yeah, always, always worked, and I've always instilled that into the kids. Yeah. How did you go from hospital into banking? What's that bridge? So, um, obviously had Nikita very young and went back to work very quickly after having her, two weeks in fact. How old were you when you had Nikita? 17. And were you still working in hospitality at that stage? Where were you? I was at school. You were at school? I was back at school doing my A-levels. So and when you then, say back to work, you mean like back to studying to get your... Yeah. 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 Mad. Do, doing my A-levels. Plus I was working in the bar at the time for my mum and dad and I also worked... Um, doing dishes and bits and pieces in a, in a nursing home as well in Donaghadee. So, yeah, done Hustler. that. Hustler. <laughs> wow. Um, and then obviously got pregnant, which, um, yeah, big, big shock. No one plans Bad for girl, it. Bad girl, big shock. No one plans for it when they're 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So that was like, oh, oh dear. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a shock. But, like, obviously Nikita's amazing now and, and we're all very close and it's all great. But, um, yeah, so... Got pregnant and had Nikita and then I actually went back to work two weeks later because I, I just thought, well, I need, I need to work, I need to get money. Mark was obviously working. Um, so we were fine. We lived with my mum and dad until, until we got a house of our own, etc. Great. Um, and then I was actually working um, in just a spa in, in Carador where, where I was living at the time. And um, they asked me to, so I was working, working in the spa behind the counter and then I was working in the butchers in the spa. And then they asked me to come in over Christmas to stick stamps on the letters in the post office. You've done like every job. I love it. <laughs> I know. Um, so anyway, long story short, I went in to stick stamps on the letters over Christmas. And then the girl left. So they were like, right, at least you need to go and work in the post office. And I'm like, oh, flip. How did I do that? Like, what did I do? So like literally it was winging it. And it was like, I remember <laughs> back to those days sitting behind that counter sometimes thinking, what the heck? And like, I've made such a balls. You need a wee on. passport application. It was awful. One second, please. No, the more like, honestly, see on a, I remember you used to tally everything up on a Wednesday. So you, you closed half day on a Wednesday, you pulled the screens down and you had to balance. Whoa. <laughs> Some Bad. days, like we were thousands of pounds out and I was like what the <laughs> hell's going on so um, yeah um, so yeah went to work in the post office and then that's how is that how where you learn to like have that superpower to count money really quickly yeah the, yeah. the how they do that blows my mind every time I see it yeah so Incredible. went to work in there and I, I do have a really funny story like and I do remember when I worked in the post office <laughs> so there was my friend and I there was only the two of us it was small I was I was the manager but I was like 10, 12, 13 whatever I can't remember years younger than her and she to be fair was far more sensible than I was so I don't even know how I was the manager and, and she I was her boss but there was only the two of us and um, the Secure Corps came to bring Secure Corps came to bring the delivery of money they're like the security money yeah. people yeah so okay. they they come to fill up and we fill the the atm with it and we we, we whatever fill you know give us all the money for the week and whatever so i can't remember but i am um, there was about 30 grand anyway and it was in this bag what so the delivery came in and it was in a bag probably should be telling the story maybe get the sack from parties <laughs> but anyway uh, it was in the bag and um the next thing we were so busy and the postman came to lift all the letters. So literally about an hour later, my friend Julie was like, um, where's the money? And I said, no, it's there in a the bag. No, Lisa, the money's not in the bag. So then when I get nervous, I take like a real nervous laugh. So I started laughing. She's like, Lisa, this isn't funny. Like, we need to get this money. And I'm like, Billy, the postman's taking the money with the letters. But he didn't know. Like, he didn't know. He just thought it was a parcel. So we were like, oh my God. And she was like going mad with me because honestly I couldn't stop laughing, but it was my nerves. And it still makes me laugh to this day, like how serious it was or yeah, could it yeah, be. Yeah. Um, so anyway, she was she had her car, I, I didn't. And uh, we jumped in the car and like we were <laughs> flying around all these wee country roads. <laughs> couldn't find the postman. Um, and then Julie's like, Billy's wife works in the school. So <laughs> she says, get you into that school and ask what time he comes home on his lunch break. So anyway, long story short, after about an hour, like this was serious stuff. 
um, Billy pulls up outside this house for his wee sandwich and a cup of tea at, at lunchtime. And we were like, oh my goodness, we're so glad to see you. Do you still have our dinners? Yeah, what's wrong? And there was the bag. Oh <laughs> the my crab. goodness. And she's like, I am going to murder you. Like, how did you let that happen? I'm like, well, that wasn't my fault. Like, it just sort of happened. So yeah, that was my post office days. So Billy hadn't even looked yet. Billy hadn't even looked. What was his reaction when he, he, was like, when he opened what? the bag? He was like, you're driving away with 30 grand on the back of the car. And he's like, oh my goodness. But what at the time, what we were really scared of was if he had went back to Newton Arts to the, like, the Royal Mail office, just threw it in with everything. Oh, There's no way. No. Way we were getting that like yeah. that was so serious I don't so. know if this is even how it works but like it falls down into the like sorting a ship area or something. and yeah. it's just raining yeah. money everywhere yeah. and all the workers are like Yo! yeah yeah so that's that was a story from the post office days and then after that <laughs> No, it That's was incredible. mad. Like, it was mad. See, when I think back to actually, if we hadn't got that, like, that was really serious. And then, um, there in back in those days, there was no jobs online. Like, it was the Newton Arts Chronicle. And I saw a, jo- a job advertised for the Woolwich, it was in Newton Arts. And I thought, I'm going to apply for that. So then that's how I get into banking. Needless to say, I didn't tell them of losing the 30 grand money before <laughs> I got the job. But yeah, so that's that's how it, it progressed into. And then Woolwich obviously was bought over by Barclays. So that's how I went into Barclays. Awesome. So how do you go from, I think, banking, I think kind of like, I don't know, what do you call it? Like cubicle office or like bullpen style office. I have got like a news or like a journalism newsroom sort of thing in my head. It's very different to this. Yeah. So how did you go from an environment in a bank to somewhere like this? Um. So through whenever I was in the bank, so I'll be I'll be working for Barclays for twenty years this March. When do you get a gold watch? I know. I don't know. <laughs> Need a gold medal more than better than a watch. Um. I know. When I say twenty years, you're you're meant to say you're not. You don't look that old. Oh no, so. that's not possible when you're twenty one. <laughs> no. Um. So yes. Yeah, so basically, I'd done lots of different jobs in the bank. Um. And then I was a small business manager. So whenever whenever we opened up the Eagle Lab here, there was myself and another girl come in just to support, just to like be here and support the startups with opening bank accounts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we didn't realize. Like I remember in the early days, and there was no one here, and I was like. Oh, like what am I gonna do? And then all of a sudden, like as you know, we were we were packed out. So then Eagle Labs and Barclays realised, okay, we need someone there full time. Um, and a couple of people from here, like a couple of the founders from here, and then people within Barclays were like, Lisa, you gonna apply for that? And to be honest, like I was like, no, like wise <laughs> up. Like I know nothing about business. I know nothing about certainly nothing about tech. Still don't know very much about <laughs> tech. Um, so no, like I'm not. I'm not gonna apply for it. And I definitely would not have applied for a job that I thought that I was really passionate about or I thought I was capable of getting. Um, and then actually one of the founders, two of the founders actually, which which um, I'll never forget them for, to be honest, they came to me and they're like, Lisa, we like we would really love you to get the job here. Um, and one in particular said, you know, if you don't get it with Eagle Labs, we possibly would have something for you, Epic. which was really, really good. And, and as I say, like, I'll never forget them for that. Um, so then I was like, actually, you know what? I think I might apply for that. And I did and got the job. And that's wow. how I'm here. Um it's been tough and whenever like obviously you were one of the first members as well and like um peter you remember me peter Pete edgar yeah me, peter edgar Legend. like he was my saving grace like i remember going to him most days and like like what do they do who's that what's this how, <laughs> how do i do that and then we used to have to put events on eagle labs and you had to code and i'm like what even is that so there was members here would have came and helped me and stuff but yeah so um they were really really good help in, in the early days to get me get cool. me through that first time so obviously co-working space as you said lots and lots of different businesses lots of different types of companies from architects graphic designers ai guys podcasters now we've got loads of TikTokers crawling around yeah. the building which is hilarious <laughs> So a real eclectic mix, and you're in the middle of it all. What is your role, or maybe a, a better way to ask that is, what do you offer our members, like for the members even listening to this? Yeah, so we have, uh, obviously our Eagle Labs have over 30 sites, um, which which all are very, uh, doing similar things, and we all have the, the kind of the same goal, but our sites are all like a little bit different. So here with Ormo Bass, for example, we're what we call an affiliate site, like a bit of a partner site. Um, and then we have other sites who maybe are run by Barclays and are on Bar- all Barclays branches and different things like that. But what we're kind of here to do is um, 
So we offer members, we have partnerships with the likes of Cambridge Judge Business School. We work with Codebase. We work with Accelerate Higher Invest in Women up in Scotland. And we use those partners to offer our members and our kind of alumni and our network and our ecosystem um, mentor ours. So we use that, which is really, really good. Um, so if you go on the Eagle Lab website, there's a load of really great people on there and you can say you know what they've scaled the business or they've raised loads of money um i would love a chat with them so we do that um we also have what's called the demo directory now which is a new platform that um we've set up and it's to get for to help businesses and founders get access to investors so right. yeah so what you can do is i think it's like a four minute pitch you can put on there four minute video and that allows investors to go on there um, and get access to your business and then mm. you know um, they can then and if they're interested connect connect Tinder with for you. startups yeah yeah <laughs> so be, what what's really good actually is it's given um founders and investors access to lots of different people across yeah, the UK yeah, yeah. and people that you never would meet before you've never heard of um so the great thing is there could be an investor who's based in London for example and it's like oh I really love that wee business in Belfast but I've never I never never would have heard of us yeah. heard of before so yeah that's that we also have that I think it's really useful as well to have kind of like a bank in house yeah for like thinking about loans or like I need to open an account or mm -hmm. even like on the personal side it's like I'm thinking about getting a mortgage like yeah. could you guide me through that process like yeah. da, 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 yeah. da. it's yeah. really really useful because I know for a lot of founders who are coming in here it's the finance bit that mm -hmm. everyone's kind of like do you yeah. know what I mean it's just yeah. not there yeah yeah so we we everything that, that Eagle Labs offers free and you know one of my things since we came here like we're not we want to support companies we want to help them scale we want to help them raise money we want to be a part of all that we want to bank them of course because we're, we're a business and we're a bank obviously but you don't have to bank with us to sure. avail of all these benefits and that's something that i'm always like i remember someone saying to me in their days but what do you want to get out of it kind yeah, of thing yeah, you know yeah. and obviously we're a business and we all want to get something but, but it's a long game it is it really yeah. is and you know i've had people here who we've supported for two three years and then be like right lads let's get this bank account open <laughs> you know but that all comes with the relationship yeah, and yeah, that yeah, comes yeah. with building that so yeah we do lots of stuff um we've got lots of programs um, lots of different different industries that we're focused on, like agri tech, law tech. Um, we've now gaming and esports, so there's lots of stuff on there. Um, to be honest, you could talk all day yeah. about the stuff that we and offer. And it's you know strategically, it's a great position for the bank to be in because mm -hmm. you're constantly being exposed to lots of different entrepreneurs. Yeah, you've got startups coming in, startups going out. It's a great way to to build a bank's network as well. It's very very cool. Why do you like working here? So I always ask people, what is it about Ormo Bass? Just the people. Yeah. Yeah, like they're just it's amazing. Like I remember um actually someone from Barclays um said to me was asking me about it one time and uh I said to him um like I know this is going to sound really silly but working here changed my life and he's like what? Like that's a big statement. But it really did because it, you know it opened up to like like everyone's just so cool and they're lovely. Like I've met some of my bestest friends now here. Yeah. Um yeah, just, just the people and the relationships and obviously interested in what they're doing. You know, and we've had some companies, as you know, come in and like, I remember like some of the Overwatch guys or Cormac from Loyal B coming in, like a couple of guys on their own, give their jaws up, sitting there. And, and now like, look at what look what they're done with their, their businesses. And that's amazing incredible. to see. And they're great people who really, really deserve to do well. So yeah, yeah, for me, it's the people. That's Love great. It. Do you remember how I got in here? No. This is mad, right? I, I just remembered this. So I was working for Deliveroo, right? Yeah. And I was cycling on the Newton Arch Road in East Belfast past Al Capoco. Mm -hmm. And there was a an ad on the bus stop that said, open a Barclays business bank account that's right. and get three months, months free in Ormo Bath. Yeah, that's right. It, crazy. Yeah. Like if yeah. it wasn't for that ad, if it wasn't for Barclays, uh -huh. if it wasn't for you connecting with me, because mm -hmm. you're really the reason why I'm here and why I'm still here. And... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's it's amazing to see actually how that presence in Barclays, sorry, the presence of Barclays has in Ormo Bass. Yeah. Sounded like I got really emotional there. But <laughs> my voice quiet. is actually just cracking. <laughs> it's amazing and it's a win-win scenario for everyone involved. Yeah. So yeah. that's really that, cool. that, that three-month thing, actually, whenever we first came here, we... We did offer because I uh, very often I would still have people contact me saying, "Hey, you're still doing the three months free," <laughs> but um, we done that at the start as a way to get people in, basically, um, and it really worked. 
Um, so once then we're obviously now full. We we have a waiting <laughs> list. Um, so now I'm like actually no, we we don't we don't offer that anymore. But um, yeah, that that's what we done at the start to try and get people through the door. Cool. What advice would you give to your 17 year old self? Wow. Um, just believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. Just keep believing. Just do do good. Keep believing. Keep working hard, and everything will everything will fall into place. This is not a meet the members question. This is usually where the interview ends. But because we're in the studio, I'm the first one. You're the first one. This is best of Belfast <laughs> territory, you know. Uh, I've got a bonus question for you, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. What's the first thing that comes into your mind whenever I ask you? What is the kindest thing someone's ever done for you? Um, just give me their time. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Kindness comes in lots of different things, but their time. Yeah. Time. It's going to give you one of these. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Yeah, crushed it. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Although, Luke, you're probably on YouTube hiding your tie while working on Illustrator or something in the background because I know that's how you listen to these. If you're interested in coming to Ormo Bass, if you're interested in starting your own business, if you already have a business and you want to find space, you want to find a home, if you're a lonely little entrepreneur working out of coffee shops and bedrooms and you want to get plugged into an amazing ecosystem, this is the best place in Northern Ireland to do it. So we'd love to hear from you. You can visit the website. You can check out other Meet the Member episodes to get a little sneaky insight into some of the other amazing people who are part of this place. And other than that, yeah, thanks. And thanks, thank you. Man. Thank you very Super much. Cool. Thank you. Look at that.